Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to spend a couple minutes uh, talking about um, some of the topics that have been brought up during discussions. So this is kind of a, a just-in-time um, lecture. I haven't written any of these notes out, so I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. But there are some very interesting questions and comments brought up that I wanted to cover. Uh, and once again, I think I already highlighted this, but um, a lot of what we'll be doing is working with models and um, the use of models is both in math and science. And remember George Box said all models are wrong, but some are useful. And related to weather, um, that's pretty pertinent because sometimes models are very wrong, um, but they are at least a useful thing to have, um, when, especially when they're right. So uh, I'd like to talk first about the models, and I'm going to frame this short discussion on the um, Hurricane Sandy, which occurred in October of 2012. This is a global picture of Hurricane Sandy, uh, the United States, or North America, South America. And here is Hurricane Sandy, which was a real monster of a storm and formed to such a large extent because some very uh, special meteorological or atmospheric processes that were occurring at the time. So here are some images of the impact, uh, the yellow cab from the city, and some really prominent destruction on Fire Island. Here is a before picture of the coastline. Here is an after picture where the uh, coastline is significantly scarred by the storm, storm surge that uh, was part of the impact of Hurricane Sandy. And you can see in some places a storm surge cut right across. And um, I don't know what the scale is on this. Oh, here it is. Uh, so this is about 200 meters. So that's about four or 500 meters um, where the storm surge uh, cut across that peninsula. Or it's probably a, uh, what are those called? Um, barrier islands. Okay, so here are some models um, that look at the projected path that Sandy could have taken. Um, and these are all based on different atmospheric parameters and these are the, uh, the legend for this. Um, so I think as Kathy outlined and maybe a couple other people, um, the, the forecasting of weather and the science of meteorology and actually a lot of sciences, they're all hinged around probability. And so they're never really um, or they can never really accurately forecast 100% of the time, um, but they can give us approximations. And I believe this is the actual path that, um, that Sandy took, which we'll see in a subsequent slide. So here's another model that shows one of the reasons why Sandy um, became so powerful. The jet stream uh, dropped down into this area along with a low pressure uh, um, a weather front here which brought in more rain and then Sandy was steered by this high pressure to come right up through um, this area and some of the moisture was supplied by this front coming down. So it was a pretty uh, exceptional weather event. So here is that same map showing the different models and here is the actual path which I took from Wikipedia that shows the uh, location of where Sandy traveled. And as you can see, the models that they ran, none of them really showed that very well. They showed it going out to shore. And like I said before, I think this is the actual official um, path it took. So um, once again, this is just to highlight that idea that uh, models are an important part and um, associated with models are probabilities of events. Oh, and one last slide. Here is a slide of another model. It's the national um, weather map. And this is called a synoptic weather map that shows locations of fronts, different pressure areas, where we're expecting different types of precipitation. The Northwest is still getting uh, snow. I have a brother in Minneapolis, and they've been hammered this year. Um, and once again, this is a model that shows probabilities that the weather map of the United States will look something like this.
Okay. Um, so the other thing that came up in, for a couple conversations was about precipitation probability and what do they really mean. Um, and uh, my slides are a little out of order right here, um, I think. Let's see. So um, I wanted to just cover this. We might cover it in, again uh, later on in the class, but I thought since it was part of the topic, um, I would just do it right now. So what do they really mean when they say something about precipitation probability? Well, precipitation includes whether it's a solid uh, material or solid water uh, or liquid water. Okay, so precipitation is a measure of any type of water uh, material that falls from the sky. And here is a diagram that shows um, one model about how the different types form. In rain, the frozen water hits warm air and turns into rain. Freezing rain, some of it turns in sleet. Um, uh, the snow melts, refreezes, and travels through the cold air. And then snow is where the, um, it never melts and falls right to the ground. Okay? And this is mimicking an elevation profile here. And of course, precipitation is hooked to the water cycle and processes like evaporation and condensation and transpiration and so forth. So precipitation probability, what do they really mean? And I took this from um, this website called Is It Going to Rain Today? Understanding the Weather Forecast. And a lot of the information was taken from um, the National Weather Service. OK, so what are features of rain probability? And this is just a, um, a list right from that website. So rain probability is the likelihood or of occurrence of precipitation stated as a percentage. It's identified as a measurable amount as defined by 0.01 inches or more, which is usually enough to produce runoff um, for puddles to form. It's a measurement of liquid precipitation or the water equivalent of frozen precipitation. And they have factors that, make you, that allow you to calculate this. It's the probability for a specified time period, for instance, today, this afternoon, tonight, Thursday, etc. And the probability is given for any point in the forecast area. So probability of rain is for a specific period of time for a given area and for an amount defined as 0.01 inches or greater. Let's this in more detail. Say that you see a weather forecast that says there's a 40% probability of rain, which was, would be welcomed here in Corvallis. So what this means is that there's a probability of precipitation that there is a statistical probability of more uh, 0.1 or more inches of precipitation at a given time in the given forecast in a specific time period. Okay, so that's what that means. So the precipitation probability is calculated by taking the forecast of certainty and multiplying that by the average or the aerial uh, coverage and then moving the decimal point to two places to the left. So for example, let's say there's an 80% certainty of rain for an area and that certainty covers about 50% of, or that the rain is gonna cover 50% of a certain area, let's say, Oregon, for instance, or the Corvallis area. So you multiply 80 times 50, you get 4,000, move the decimal point two points to the left, and you get a 40% probability of rain. You can also do this, or can also, 40% can also come through a different means. Let's say there's a 40% certainty, but that rainfall is going to cover a whole area. So once again, 40 times 100, 4,000, moving the decimal places. Two decimal point two times to the left gets you 40%. So notice that the probability is a function of two things, the certainty that it will occur and the coverage area that will um, be covered by the rain. So there are terms that you'll probably hear from your weather forecast, and here is a table of those terms taken from that same website. If it's zero, there's a no chance, 10%, slight chance, and isolated, meaning there's um, there'll be just certain areas that'll get it. 20% means slight chance, but there'll probably be greater coverage. 30 to 50% means there's a better chance and that they'll be scattered. 
that means not in every area. 60 to 70% means likely and numerous, covering a large area. And when it's over 80%, that means it's going to rain in the area that they described. So here are my image credits. I hope this helps, and um, we'll talk to you soon.